Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to Bird Nothing. Now, you don't see the birds yet. You will in a second. But what do the players start with? They start with two trebuchet. Well, it's not actually a trebuchet. They start with two packed town centers and a king, and they start in the middle of the map. Now, the way this map works is birds just constantly spawn and then eventually explode. And when they explode, resources spawn because otherwise there would be no resources to collect here. Um, so this should be pretty wild. And I think we had done this years ago, but it's been quite a long time since and we'll see if the players can figure it out. It's kind of funny. I don't think they realized there would be literally nothing on the map. So they're all, oh, there was a bird explosion. They're all trying to find areas to go. And they're probably all very confused. So basically, there's a button you just press to unpack your TC. And then your town center slowly unpack. Like, this is close, for example. Um, so, okay, there's an elephant. So I guess... Oh, wait, there's some trees. So I want to follow... Oh, God, we've got a stormy dog. Look at the stormy dog go. This is, this is something from the scenario editor they added way back when they introduced the game. Does the stormy dog explode? Because we established this before we started. I, I can respect birds, but I don't really love birds. We had a community game recently where someone was... His name was the bird-loving Asian. And I just feel birds, in general, there could be pretty birds, but they've just got a crazy, mysterious potential for power that I don't appreciate. Yes. I guess some people might say the same things about dogs. But where are the explosions? Okay, we've got elephants. Good. I want to see birds explode. Let's see. I, I, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason to when or why they explode. Boom, explosion, boom, explosion. Okay, they just randomly explode and drop resources. I haven't yet to see a dog explode. Oh, it barks. All right, good stuff. Okay, so um, this is a little overwhelming, but you know, players are gonna eventually build up bases and economy and then try and kill each other. Now, apparently the whole explosion thing stops at the 35 minute mark. So right now there's elephants everywhere. Um, players have tried to find good locations for their TCs. I feel like having the town centers together is probably smart, which is what Roids did. I guess we could probably introduce the players. So we'll start with Roids. Roids here in the gray. I'm gonna try and look how buff he is. Roids. Uh, he's playing as the Franks, okay? In the green, to the north of Roids, we have Nighthawk, who is trying to bring in one of these elephants. And I don't know if the villagers are prepared to help their friend, but Nighthawk playing as the Malians, okay? And Nighthawk, I have all the faith in the world, is going to kill that elephant. Uh, wrapping around to the right of the map, we have Lugalus, who's making a stable. Oh, they start in Feudal Age. So Lugalus, Luga, Lugala, I don't know, Lugo, um, who is just now unpacking the second town center, playing as the Vikings. Um, in the purple, or magenta, we have Spaz the Adventurer, playing as the Turks. In the yellow, we have Sir Walrus, playing as the Japanese. I feel like the Japanese could be very strong, by the way, because the cheaper lumber camps, mills, and mining camps are going to be incredibly helpful with how spread out the resources are right now. Uh, in the blue, we have Norval playing as the Aztecs. In the orange, who got very fortunate with gold underneath the TC, because that was just a bird exploding, we have um, AT41, who still has not unpacked... Wait, hold on a second. Oh, orange has another TC over here. This is something that came out of a bird. So that is Emperor in a Barrel. Now, I don't know what you do with that, but they might be able to do something with that. Maybe Orange is saving that for later. I don't have answers. Look at the resources everywhere. There's elephants, there's trees. I did notice that the trees all have 200 wood, which is pretty helpful. Yes, I know, dog. I've yet to see a dog explode, so that's that's good for all the dog lovers, dog lovers out there. But if they do explode, it's for a good cause. It's so these people can, uh, you know, play in a community game. Blue says G. And I hope this isn't Blue tapping out and calling it the GG, because Blue, you played pretty well. You're actually leading in terms of eco. <laughs> what Blue really needs right now is trees. 
And Blue says, guys, what's this barrel? Yeah, so Emperor in a Barrel is something from a community, uh, something from a campaign. There might be an option, or maybe if they delete it, it gives them something. There's either something when you select it, it lets you unpack it, similar to the TC. Or maybe if you delete it, it gives you something cool. But this is pretty cool, guys. We've got birds on birds on birds on birds and birds. And dogs. Sorry, dogs. I didn't mean to forget about you. And then there's also one relic in the middle, which it, it kind of feel like this is like Indiana Jones, right? One relic, and if you pick up the relic, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> uh, it, it's just the way it looks. Actually, now that I notice it, there's actually relics up here as well. Wow, okay. So, you know, it's kind of luck of the draw in terms of what you get. It seems like Green's found a lot of wood, not a whole lot of food. Um, there will be fishing ships and then fish traps for Nighthawk, which is an interesting little strategy to get some long-term food. But Golden Stone popping up in different areas. Is a regicide game, is a diplomacy game, so they could all ally each other. Right now, Gray is the only one that has not allied everyone. Gray has not allied Teal for some reason. And we've got some pretty skilled players. AT41's played before, Norval, Spaz, Paul Hockey, Nighthawks, or Walrus. I think Lugalus and Royds are the players that have played the least. And you could tell, like, Lugalus at least yes. 15 eco, struggling a bit more than maybe some of the others. But, you know, the players are struggling, but we appreciate the players for going through the struggle. Because let's be honest, this is probably one that's a lot more fun to watch than it is to play. Red's still very confused about what to do with the Emperor in a barrel. Now, can someone possibly pull up the scenario and give us info on that? I don't know. Red says they all died. I can't select. Capture Age doesn't let me... Whoa. Capture Age does not let me select player vision like I used to, but this is Gaia vision. Whoa! The bird vision! The birds see it all and then they die. And then you also get vision from the elephant's stomach as he's being eaten. I don't know. I feel like you can delete the Emperor in a barrel, but maybe players haven't done it yet. It's apparently just a trade card. Oh, maybe it just has 100 gold for you, and then you just take it to your market. I could see that. Hmm. So again, I can't select things. Holy elephants! It seems like there's a lot more elephant action towards the middle. I also wonder if a certain type of bird or dog spawns a certain type of thing. Like, look, Capture Age won't even let me follow the dog. We're going to follow these two dogs and see what happens to them. Also, I think that is an elephant in the middle of a tree. <laughs> that or he has a really weird third tusk, right? <laughs> Kids always made fun of me in school, but my mom says it's normal. <laughs> oh, dogs turn into berries. Okay. Hold on. We need to follow more dogs. This is science. Paul Hockey asking the world, who's dealing with the exploding dogs and birds, is Grey enemy with everyone else? Also, this is chaos, and Grey realized and allies Teal as if to say sorry. Will it be berries? If not, it is completely random. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I select the dog, it has resources here. Almost like the chances it has of spawning something. What? How does that work? Norval declares war on orange. And the orange was right between both the blues TCs. Also, did I just see an emperor in a barrel get created from a lumber camp? We are still figuring this out. Orange says, come on, blue. And Blue deleted the Emperor in a Barrel for us, which is kind of nice. We'll see if it does anything, but Blue says I had to, and now they're allied. So, Orange, that's a warning. And Blue says I had to try. Now, Kings do not explode here like we do in a lot of other community games, as a reminder. I still want to know if there's consistency in what spawns. I'm going to assume that this indicates that there is not consistency in what spawns. But there's a lot of elephants. Too bad no one has the Mongols here for the hunt bonus. Man, you'd be going fast Imperial Age. 
Holy. Yeah, there's definitely less on the outside, right? So as far as far out you go, you're going to struggle to find stuff. But this is where all the, the trees and the hunt spawn. Listen, I don't know who made this. And I know this was created a year or two ago. And at one point, we had actually done it before. And I kind of forgot about it. Never put it on YouTube. Maybe the game sucked. I don't know. But this is a cool concept. And so to maybe Hardy can edit in the name of the person and, and a picture of the mod person who made this is just kind of a thanks for the concept because the thing about nothing maps i love the true nothing maps where it's like forest nothing and it's all forest gold nothing and it's all gold eventually you kind of want like some playable concepts to it and you know the concern with only birds would obviously be you can't normally get anything from birds okay um so yeah th this to me has played out quite nicely now because it's two tc start Players should have tons of eco, and with all the food and gold and stone that's around, they'll really start to build up. Uh, they could, of course, ally each other, trade, and do things that would happen in a normal Diplo game. And right now, there's the eco layout. Red has been struggling the most, and players who struggle the most sometimes want to wall the most, so Red will try and build a little cute little base over here. Now, in all fairness, Red hasn't had a lot of elephants out here. And I have no ability to check Red's point of view because of Capture Age not allowing me to. Because Capture Age isn't used to bird nothing. So I don't know if Red can see the middle. But Green and uh, Orange, at least, are going to think about trade for late game. And the markets can fit there. And what is Amphibious Terrain? So we could actually see ships and land units on that area. Just tuned in one of the things with capes flying around. Yes. So I don't know the full history of the stormy dog. Yes. But I know that uh, it is something that was included in the original game. Um, there were certain maps that had it too. It was actually a lot of uh, scenarios that you'd play back in the day. Uh, scenario editors would toss it in there. Um, because it was just possible. Like the original creators of the game added a bunch of weird things that never you, you would never encounter in normal games and it was only available in the scenario editor and the stormy dog was one of them there's also the shark Azor, which is this we, we've used it actually in scenarios in the past where it's a bomb um it's a and hardy can put it on screen later for videos but it's it's like let me remember okay it's a shark that has a chef's hat on and then there's a cat riding on it with like a uh, some some type of other hat and yeah and it's got it's like a rocket shark. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have perspective here. Hold on. According to developer Matt Pritchard, Stormy Dog was named after an unwanted puppy that he rescued from a storm drain on January 15th, 1997. The cheat unit was coded in under 4 hours and the art was made by Duncan McKissick. And then there's more perspective. The real Stormy Dog passed away in May 2008 at the age of 11. Well, that's a beautiful little story. I didn't know there was... I didn't know there was... There's reasons behind it. The Stormy Dog. Wow! That is so freaking cool. This is bird nothing, though, and we're talking about the dog. Well, I mean, let's face it. Dogs win over birds every day, okay? I Like I said, I'm not a big bird guy, okay? Someone asked me what my favorite bird was. i say, like... An eagle or a falcon or something cool. But birds kind of freak me out. You won't catch me standing too close to birds. I never even knew I had an issue with birds until people asked me about birds. And then the more I thought about it, I was just like, yeah, not really a fan. I don't know. There's not many redeeming qualities for a bird besides exploding into a bunch of elephants, trees, golds, and stones. That's pretty cool. Now, how many drugs did the developers have to do for Sharkazor to happen? I bet you they don't give you that full story. Because <laughs> that thing looks pretty crazy. It is a rocket shark with a chef's hat on that has a cat riding on it. And it looks like the cat was prepared for cold weather. Like, there's no way they're going to give the full story on that one. Okay, they're chatting. I should pay attention to this. What have we got? We have an actual game here, guys. Uh, red wants friends. Purple hasn't responded. Blue and orange talking. Norval says, teal, orange, green, me, buddy, buddy. 
Pulse has worked for me. Orange is working more so with green in the north. Also thinking about trading with Sir Walrus in the south. Hmm. And yeah, they could trade Cog if they wish to. I think trade cards would make more sense because it's like, what's the difference at this point? And then you can at least like relocate them on the land if you needed to run or something. Imp is about to come in for Norval. What? That's nuts. And Norval has a bunch of Emperor in a Barrels. Now, when you click the Emperor in a Barrels, it doesn't say that there's gold in there. But in nine minutes, the birds and the explosions stop. All the explosions obviously coming from the birds. I wonder how many elephants will be remaining on the map when this game ends. So let's just try and guess. Right now, there's 132 elephants. Again, the explosions stop at some point. And players will continuously eat elephants, but maybe not forever because villagers are probably super weak. Right? There's a lot of low HP villagers in there. Hmm. All right. Everyone has to get their guests in before 30 minutes game time. So we've got three minutes to think about this. And then YouTube later on. Hey, look, there's an elephant inside of a castle. That won't be eaten. Uh, YouTube later on. I'm going to hold you accountable and you could put your guests in as well. I'm really thinking hard. I was really good at the guess how many bean jelly beans are in the jar game in school. Oh, God. Now there's 146 elephants. Mmm. So the amount has grown. But how much will they eat? Not seeing many farms. I'm going to go with... Oh, this is tricky. I'm so torn. I don't want to put a number down yet. I want to wait. I'm going to wait till, you know, 30 minutes because that was the cutoff. I'm going to be smart about it. Because green's not taking any more elephants. Green's thinking farms and fish traps and trade cogs and trade carts. Wow, that's style points. Also, look at the setup. It just looks cool. Hmm. Still thinking. Orange talking to apparently the team. So it's orange, blue, green, and then ye teal. Okay. So not yellow, even though orange was talking to yellow. Okay, final check on elephants. There's 155. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with 73 elephants. Because I think they're going to start farming. That's in, I think even think 73 is ambitious. I would be surprised if it's very far below 73. Paul says, I was going to get Tarkins up and kill someone. I've won a community game before, so I'm just in it for the kills tonight. Oh, wow. What a brag. I've already won, so I think I'm just going to kill people now because, you know, winning's kind of overrated. You know, after I won one, I just felt like I kind of accomplished everything I wanted to do in life. Okay, Paul. Well, you have told people how strong you are. They may... You also told people that you want to kill people. So they may think that they're in for it. This has been pretty ridiculous. I can't imagine what it looks like from a player perspective. Just random snow leopards showing up and attacking. And elephants and trees. Red walling up. Trade cards blocking. I thought they fixed the trade pathing. Party, can we get, like, some music for this? Okay, well, he's like, break it up, guys. Come on, get a room. There we go. Perfect. Gotta love trade cards. <laughs> they actually did a really good job with the pathing on trade cards at one point, and that wasn't happening. That used to happen a lot more frequently. But it could have something to do with the craziness of the map. Red actually walled up this relic, and Blue and Teal have both gone over to try and take it. A smart move from Red to wall it up. We'll see if that makes the others unhappy. How many elephants are we at right now? There's 184. Ugh. But I'm still hearing quite a few die, and in two minutes, there will be no more birds, guys. There will be no more birds. Eco count 130 for Paul? 
122 for blue, 109 for orange. And Paul says red seems to be against everyone right now. He's blocking off trade on both sides. I... Okay, maybe, but I think red is just really yes. inexperienced, and red just wants to survive and is really scared. So I think that you could reach out to red and say, hey, red, I notice your score's low, and I notice you're walling. Do you want to be on our team? <laughs> but yes, if someone's trying to trade to that corner, people are not going to like these walls. And Norval has a heart and is going to say, Red, can I have that relic? Oh my god, I thought you were going to give him tips so he wouldn't get killed by everyone. All right, well, I mean, everyone's in it to win it here. We've got some pretty big names. Ten seconds until the birds stop. Unless it's bugged and the birds happen forever. Uh, that's it. That was the final explosion. No more, no more birds are spawning now. All right, what did I say? 73 elephants? What are we at now? Uh, 209. <laughs> Man, you know what would be smart? Is to get monks next to the villagers that are weak. It might actually be villagers. Actually, blue has done that. Blue has monks intermingled, intertwined with the villagers, and they're just always getting healed up. That's really smart. Red probably overwhelmed has not responded to blue, which is not a great sign. And I feel like red did reach out to talk before, but red may be overwhelmed later on. Not easy to play this game in general. Then you have to unpack TCs. Then you have all these weird things popping up all the time. But at the end of the day, we are here. This is bird nothing. We've got eight players. We've got eight kings. And now things are a bit more relaxed. Red's collected this game. Um, looking pretty solid. 30k plus res collected from three players right now. Orange is closing in on that, as is green. But uh, trade profit's pretty high for Nighthawk. Nighthawk would maybe be one of my favorites if that trade continues. Hmm. Can you get stone from somewhere? I've found none. Orange says, I can send you some. He says, would be very much appreciated. Guy is creeping with castles. Yeah, Gray is Frank's. His name is Royds, and I don't feel like Royds is a very friendly name. Like, I don't hear the name Royds and think that player is going to be nice and kind and work with me throughout the rest of the game. I'm not saying anything about yes. people who are on Royds, and maybe it's the wrong type of guy, you know, group to talk smack about because they could physically hurt me more than others. I'm just saying it's just not a very warm and loving name. That's just the reality. Okay. Gray says to everyone, I'm friends with all. Barely spoke trying to Google Diplo hotkeys now. Okay, so Gray doesn't know how to do hotkeys. Which could explain it. That is at the top right options for anyone who's wondering. It's, there's a bunch of options. It's still not easy, but it's there. But that was smart from Gray to at least say something. Like, hey, just so you know, I don't really know how this works yet. I am friendly. Did Red, Red complete the walls? No. Actually, what happened? I feel like a villager died, or maybe Red just pulled the villagers off of the walls. The trade is coming down to Red's corner. Red is not partaking in the trade. And Red did partake in that relic. So good stuff there from Red. Um... I am waiting to see if there's going to be any moves towards kings. Let's do a king check, shall we? We'll start with yellow. Yellow has stonewalled up. Really smart play. Lots of castles. Purple. King's in the TC. Purple doesn't have a ton right now. I'm a little concerned for spaz and the lack of buildup. Red's pretty good. Palisade walls won't do much, but you've got a castle and then it's in the TC. Gray's got a bunch of castles and army protecting here, so that's great. Including the fake axemen or units in each castle. Teal is smack dab in the middle of the map, but is a trio of castles. Blue has quite a few castles here and TCs and elephants still dying. Um, I Again, I really like Blue's approach here with the elephants. And Orange has just moved to a corner castle, but there's just one. 
And then, uh, I think... Oh, green. We forgot about green. Green still in that TC. I'm really, really curious on the elephant count now. It's 166. Guys, I'm gonna get it. Okay, I'm gonna get it. As Spaz turns on Teal, but Spaz turns on Teal because Tarkins have shown up and this is a player who said, I'm just in it to kill kings because I've already won a game before. <laughs> Paul's a good player. He's a good player. He's looking for the king. Now, purple's on the move. And if purple runs into yellow's walls for safety, Sir Walrus might be next. So I wouldn't exactly like the fact that purple is here if I were Sir Walrus. And I might offer up the king to Teal as long as Teal would, you know, offer to protect. Because Paul sees this. Sorry, I'm trying to check Paul's point of view. I actually can't do that because of the way this map works. Unless maybe I am on his point of view. Oh, whoa, something changed. Uh, it seems like when, when they changed stances, it changed it. And here come the Tarkins attacking the buildings. Purple's on the move. Paul had to turn on Sir Walrus to get that to happen. The king is slower than the Tarkin, but is a slippery fella. Again, poor Walrus now kind of needs to make army, all because Purple decided to run here. Purple didn't even give him a heads up. Red telling Purple and telling Gray that Teal's a bully right now. So that seems to be who Red's going to be teamed with. And Tarkin's just looking for the king. They're not really killing any units, so that's pretty nice from Teal, I guess. But the king from Purple will survive. Not attacking you, Yellow, says Paul. Yeah, I mean, this is respectable from Paul. He's like, I'm not trying to make any enemies here. Trying to kill Perp. Also, do I have any mods around? Because that'd be... That'd be great. Get out of my base then, Sir, says Sir Walrus. Well, Sir Walrus, he wants to have his king. Thank you. Appreciate it. He says mod... Uh, he doesn't say mod. Sorry. He says can't. He doesn't want to pick a fight with yellow. But... Oh, he uh, maybe he physically couldn't because the gate was locked. I don't know. And Teal now allies yellow. Hmm. Interesting decision there. You showed multiple people you're looking to maybe kill some kings here. I, I would... I'm sorry, but I would have Teal high on my list to, to kill here at this point, right? And Teal has made it very clear publicly, like, hey, I'm out here to kill kings. But also at the same time was nice to yellow, so I don't know, like, who you give points to in that. Red has turned on Teal because Teal was being a bully, and Teal says, why Red? Now, Lugalus, I really respect you, and I respect your code and your honor and everything that you, you fight for here in life. But you can't defend from Teal yet. <laughs> so Orange says, you need help, Teal. Yeah, he... well, no, actually, no, Teal doesn't need help. Red needs help. Red says, you are attacking Perp. Perp is my friend. So Red explains why. Yeah, Red's got honor. And I respect Red a lot, but if the Tarkins would have made it over here and Red would die to it, it could be a problem. Having said that, it seems like Purple's ready to defend. And Paul says to the team, Red and Purple are attacking. Okay. So Red and Purple are attacking me. This is... that That's not the exact truth. I think the, the correct statement would be I attacked purple and now I am, you know, paying for it. But but it is true. There There is fighting from purple and red towards teal. It seems like teal is going to have a team to back him up. Now, elephant update. Everyone wants it. Let's see. 73, 73, 73. 137. Dang. But we still got a long game. Mike capture age is struggling to capture this but we've got hussars killing villagers from teal that's all spread up through the middle we've got war wagons from orange that are on the way to support blues got castles and tcs everywhere with a ridiculous eco of 175 but it is going to be tarkins and elite war wagons up against at the moment um camels and berserks 
Now, if purple and red had full upgrades on their units, they would actually be amazing against this, I think. But they don't have them fully upgraded right now. That said, the War Wagons also aren't fully upgraded. They're missing quite a few attack upgrades. So that might even out. But it's a 2v2 fight. Green is just chilling. I think green showed a lack of trust in gray earlier. Um, you know, the potential of gray is still there. They're not really chatting. Norval's wondering what's happening. But I, I'm, I'm just... I'm a little concerned for red and purple because it feels like they're kind of out on their own right now. Especially because purple was trading this way. The purple didn't really do anything wrong. This just... This honestly just spawns from Paul wanting to kill, and killing, of course, is, is an option. Paul says, I think they're working with yellow and gray. Now, yellow would make sense because purple ran there. Gray has been pretty quiet, so I guess that would make sense as well. Gray had actually said blue need help. And I, I, I guess, and for whatever reason, Sir Walrus then goes to Gray. Oh, he said the wrong one. He says, I'm good, but I appreciate it because Blue is offering help. Ah, I see. Okay, so that it was confusing, but Blue says, Yellow, do you need help? Originally, Yellow said something to Gray by mistake and says, I'm good, but I appreciate it. Okay. Green says, Gray was peaceful so far with me, but not much talking either. All right. So, camels should be able to defend from the Tarkins that are not elite? Huh? Oh, camels will shred. Guys, you get plus three attack and plus um, 50 HP, or is it 40 HP? No, 50 HP when you get elite. This is an insane difference between Tarkins. There might be some other stats at play there as well. Holy crap. I think, I mean, Teal's a good enough player. I'm going to assume that Paul just forgot. Dang. It's a pretty big thing to forget, if you ask me. Trebuchets are in the transport here for Sir Walrus. Sir Walrus may choose to use that transport to go take those trebs somewhere and kill someone's king. It's pretty nifty to use the water like that. I want to show stockpiles here. Gold count. It's got to be crazy. Sir Walrus, 13,000 gold. Not bad for Nighthawk. Not bad for Norval either. Not bad for most players, actually, except for poor Red. Grace has struggled with chat menu again. Gray, not able to really chat as much. Paul put a big target on his back, but just wanted to have some fun and get some kills. I want to have the elephant number guessed correctly. And I'm at 105. It's at 105 right now. Oof. No one's killing more elephants. Oh, man. That's so tricky. I think... I think my prediction's not going to win. Obviously, with YouTube comments, people could always look and find out. Wait, how's there 109 now? I thought it said 105. Did I misread it? Now it's 108. Okay, so it's going down. I swear, I've had a... I've really enjoyed trying to predict things recently ever since we did the TTL predictions contest. I've, I've enjoyed that. <laughs> I've been adding that in. The other aspects of the game. Uh, the war wagons get chewed up because of the bonus damage from the camels. The camels go Ooh, and they're just eating these wagons. And now, you know, Koreans have the answer to, to this. Uh, I think, first off, two more attack upgrades would do wonders here for AT41. But also, some halves would be good. But Spaz the Adventurer, rising up with kills, has done a fantastic job here in defense. Nice job from Spaz. Spaz got the king back home and everything. And seems like red and uh, purple are a real friendship. As all oh, yeah, Gray's taking elephants. I'm teamed with teal, blue, and green right now. Want to join us as orange to gray? I think we know Gray's pretty unresponsive. Teal says all of us attack purple. He's getting strong. Gray agrees with orange's proposal. And Sir Walrus says, keep Orange distracted. He says this to Purple. Ooh. How, for how long? 
Oh, 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 baby, 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 baby. There's some cab archers and trebuchets. And now this is just a tease. It actually works out right now for yellow that gray and orange are talking to each other because I think orange is focused on the fight, but also maybe needing to respond to gray. It's tricky to do. Coming with my anti cav Sorry for slow, says Nighthawk. So Nighthawk's on the way. Lots of pointy boys. Comes yellow. Transports can be a bit awkward at times. This is this is Sir Walrus's community game experience paying off. Now you need to split your cab archers up. So you want like some on each side. But yes, you get the trebs ready, you unpack them, then you turn. I'm concerned that if the king goes this way. And actually, if a trade cog is prioritized, that maybe the king won't die. But it's pretty good chance. That's why you split sides. The king is right there. And it dies. AT41 is dead. He just said, Gray, we're with blue, teal, and green. And nope. And Sir Walrus deletes the evidence. There's no exploding kings here. But that is our first kill in the game. An epic play from Sir Walrus. And Orange says, well played. And Green says, what happens? And now Blue says to everybody, yellow killed Orange. It was him. It was him, I say. And Teal obviously said it as well. So they noticed. Gray then says, we go for Orange now? <laughs> Gray is always like six steps behind with Diplo. I swear. Oh, man, Roids, you're killing me. Okay. All right. There's a king in here, guys. Wait, no, there's not a king in there. That's actually... That is not the correct location for the king. But these non-elite Tarkins are heading in. Trying to kill Red. And these Tarkins were sneaky, but they haven't been able to make it to the king yet. And the king is in this castle. So Red lives to see another day. Does have trade cogs down here. Does have pikemen with vikings. You know, it's like... It's a pretty decent situation to be in there. Now, Red clearly struggles a little bit more as a player. I guess my concern would be, will Red have the teammates? Is Spaz good enough to work with Red? Can they do it together without, like, four people, like it seems like the other team's going to do? Uh, Red declaring war on Blue because Blue is, I guess, around. And, oh, it's just villagers, actually. I, may, I think Blue has just simply come over here for wood, but Red is so concerned with these attacks... That Red is assuming this is more of an offensive thing. And yeah, Red realized, actually, what was going on here and is just going to ally. Um, Purple getting kills on Teal and Teal mixing in Paladins now. So finally, Teal will be fighting with a unit that's maxed out. And I'm sure Paul clicked Elite Tarkin and maybe just was slightly missing the resources. Paul, of course, assumes these things are fully upgraded. But nice defense from Red. Again, it just seems like wave after wave after wave seems to be heading in towards purple and in towards red. Look at all the mining camps and lumber camps here. They've done a good job of clearing out the map, guys. I actually think they're going to be low on wood soon. Yeah, that's why blue is in that corner. Look at blue's wood count right now. Red's going to roll through with Bombard Cannons. Uh, or not red, sorry, green. There's Bombard Cannons, there's Pikes, there's Paladins, there's Paladins. This is a lot of stuff. And Paul, Paul doesn't care. Paul likes to make a, a move for the king without hesitation here. I think Gray, who's now turned on Sir Walrus and has also turned on Purple, is going to finally join the fight. And I think Sir Walrus's strategy has always been just trying to snipe people. At least that's what it obviously was with um, with Orange. But Sir Walrus is going to have to join the main fight. I don't know if they have it, guys. And then I'm curious, will Green, Gray, Blue, will they turn on each other? I think they'll probably uh, turn on Teal before anyone else, just because of Teal's playstyle. You don't want to leave someone alive who's that aggressive. I'm telling you, these camels are strong. Camels do great bonus damage against paladins. It's full cap. It's just sad for Spaz that we're missing Blacksmith upgrades. 
I am here. <coughs> Sorry, I had a sneeze coming. Gray, hoping to build more castles here on purple. I think it's misclicked with the villagers. But there's so many units coming. Oh my goodness. Red's got to get here to help out. Red's got this teensy little rinky-dink army. I mean, it's decent. It's got better blacksmith upgrades, but still. And now Blue's making a move against her walrus as well. So it is three players versus the remaining four. And the scores are pretty split, at least. Well, I don't know what's happening to Red's Arbalest there. But to me, it really does feel like the, um, the you know, numbers matter. The four players pushing in have more potential with their attacks. I say that as Purple does a good job of defending, and as Red's trying to push back one of these castles, but there is just so many castles they've got to fight through. And we've only seen Purple, Red, and... Um, sorry, we've only seen Purple, Red, and Yellow really defend. We haven't seen any, like, solid pushes from them yet. So I just don't know what they're fully capable of there. I think Axeman would actually be a pretty sick unit to continue making here, if you're gray. Um, great against the infantry, and pretty good against camels as well. Now, it's not Exploding Kings. So, if you feel like you're going to die, you can't just go sacrifice your king in somebody's face. But Purple's currently actually in Red's castle, if you're wondering. Hmm... The fact that yellow is still trading with orange's dock is pretty crazy. Like, if orange would have just turned on yellow, even if orange still died, but if orange turned, the trade would have all gone down for yellow. That was such a big risk. But yellow is still able to trade. And yellow is actually palisade walled the trade from the others. So this trade is going to be super clogged. Like, the trade carts will be fine. But the cogs won't work anymore. Purple's base going down. And this is... I, again, I think the top four right now... It, they're a team, but they're a team for now. And I, I guess I say top four, and based on score, it's really just like the top three. I think blue is insane force. You also see so much experience here with putting the random units inside of towers to fake people out on where castles might be. And here, blue's kind of ready to go. That's it. Elite Samurai and Hand Cannon's really strong combination against Jags. I respect the Jags. I actually had a ranked game earlier today where I went full Elite Jaguar Warrior. A good time. Was up against Romans. They were going Legionaries. Felt like it would make sense. Um... But, you know, I was not up against Japanese. And I think Elite Samurai, again, accounting for full upgrades, which we have quite a few missing here for yellow. Elite Samurai and Hand Cannon, some of the best combinations you could have against this unit. The Jags do have plus eight attack, though. The Samurai only have plus one because it's missing upgrades. And maybe for blue, blue just wants enough to be able to get momentum here and trep down this castle. Teal is also showing up, and Teal is raided a bit. And of course, Purple's like almost dead right now. 1890, are you watching the AFL Grand Final today? Is it bad if I don't know what that is? <laughs> is that rugby? <laughs> I actually don't know what it is, so no, I'm not. <laughs> so feel free to tell me what it is. So Nighthawk's kind of been following the others here, and Nighthawk is just confirming that Red is also on the other team. And I think Red will unfortunately be next. Baseball? AFL is in baseball. Oh, it's Aussie Football League? Okay. So I, I had it right. Aussie rules football. You were just in Australia. Just because I was in Australia doesn't mean I'm familiar with... They're all their sports leagues. I wish I would have seen rugby, though. And I wish Sir Walrus would have been able to keep that king alive, right? Uh, the rugby goes down. No, the king goes down. Sir Walrus gets a snipe. But then, of course, people knew Sir Walrus's potential. And Sir Walrus dies pretty quickly. I, I We did watch rugby on TV while we were over there. But I never got to see um, a rugby game. I, I looked in every city I was in. 
and there just never was a game happening. It was just like everything about our schedule for our time in Australia just never worked out, which was disappointing. Um, but, you know, we'll be back someday and we'll put rugby on the list. Never exhibit a preference for either rugby or AFL to an Aussie. You will cause a war, and I mean a war. Okay. All right, good to know. We don't want to cause a war. I mean, that's part of what community games are, but... Look at Red trying to be sneaky. Almost ended up killing Paul here. I really respect Red's play. I really respect Purple's play, but unfortunately for them, they're just there's just too many players on the other side. And AFL is not rugby. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, is it like the NFL then? Is it the the NFL for Australia? Is it American football in rugby? Or am I wrong? Now that we're talking about this. I stopped him. He got my King Castle, but I got away. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. I want to check stockpile again because these guys are producing a lot of stuff right now. Purple's on the ropes. Red's on the ropes. Everyone else pretty good. Yes. Gray is 38 on gold, but doesn't have that much gold in the bank. So maybe Gray has a lot of units in Q. But Teal was almost killed there by Red. Almost. We need to kill Green next. He's way ahead and has counter units to all of us. Hmm. I mean, Malians are great against Huns. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you could also say Aztecs kind of have counter units to all of us. But yeah, Malians are really good. Purple asked me to snipe you, says Blue. Says this to Green. Purple, if you snipe red, I snipe teal, says Blue. Wait, it was Blue's idea. And then he snitches. Purple's asking where the king is. Norval with the sneaky play here. Wait, 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 wait. Norval's going to everyone and saying, Purple asked me to snipe you. Sorry, there's a lot of chat right now. I'm getting a little overwhelmed. I mean, again, it doesn't change much. Like, purple and red are barely hanging on here. They're hanging on by a thread. And these guys are slowly grinding them down. I mean... I think they should just... I mean, purple and red... I mean, purple's gonna try and make a move against somebody here. And then it's all gonna go down, right? And then the four people are gonna have to fight against each other here. In bird nothing, where there's no more birds. Oh, how many elephants? 58? No! Wait, 65? Let's zoom out further. 66. I'm pretty close, guys. Hopefully they stop eating elephants now. I just don't get why Norval would try and convince people who are already enemy to purple that purple's trying to snipe them. Like, obviously, it'd be more sneaky if Norval was like, hey, Paul is going to try and kill you. And he said that to everyone else. That would create some real chaos, but, you know, Purple trying to talk about sniping people. And to be fair, you know, maybe I missed an attempt, you know, Purple saying that because there's so many freaking chat messages right now. But, you know, like, yeah, that's kind of expected. That one relic that Red so badly wanted is out of the monastery now. Red's base is slowly disappearing. The king is still alive. The trebuchets for purple, which are so important to purple's attempts to snipe the kings, is going to get sniped here, and that might be the end for purple. If this was exploding kings, I'm sure that both red and purple would have sent their king and unalive it in someone else's base. The possibility, unfortunately, not there. Nighthawk's trade cog still blocked up by yellow's walls, though. Love the fact that yellow did that. So, Sir Walrus, at least you've got that to be happy about. Hmm. Red's gonna take losses. Red will eventually die. Purple will eventually die as well. These guys are the cockroaches of this game. They refuse to die. You cannot kill them. It feels like the other players should be working together, though. And Blue's not really doing much. Blue's just ruining my elephant prediction contest. So Blue's chilling, waiting for the next thing to happen. Teal's chilling, waiting for the next thing to happen. That's the thing, is like, no one wants to make the move because they are thinking about the next step. Blue wasn't even enemy to purple this whole time. 
Hmm. What do we have here? Teal says, we're secretly friends with them and want to play. Oh, the kings. <laughs> Where are your kings? We're secretly friends with them. Red says, oh, really? Let's meet in the middle. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Teal. Teal says, it's exploding kings. You should come explode me and make me feel bad. <laughs> I mean, he, he made it a little clear he was joking. It, had he been serious? Like, what you should do is say, hey, like, it's Exploding Kings. Send your king into Blue's base. Obviously, it's not Exploding Kings. Red might think there's a chance. The king dies, and then there's no explosion. I love that, though. That makes me happy. And uh, honestly, it's as much as I respect Red and Purple. It, they, they, they're, they're going to die. I'm ready for that next chapter of my life, you know? when Lugalus and Spaz the Adventure are defeated. They're doing a great job, like sniping the traps. Woo, fantastic. But you know, I think these guys are like, it's about time. Let's kill these fools. And then I think all hell's gonna break loose. Then I wanna check stockpiles. Guys, they have nothing on wood. Nothing on wood. Gold workers and gold amount is important because they will have to buy wood. Even if you don't have a lot of farms, because you won't have a lot of wood, that could be really problematic in the long run. There's no trees left on the map. Hmm. Look at yellow's wall, so root. Yeah, that's something that green hasn't noticed and needs to delete, because the more trade blockage there is, then the less gold you're going to have available to buy wood, basically, right? Oh my god. For the love of god, guys. For the love of God, heal them! Heal them! Another another great example of why we have Exploding Kings, though, because Red, out of spite, Red and Purple are just like, we're going to fight forever because you guys are freaking bullies, and there's also no benefit to us sending our kings out in the open. Mateel just waiting with the next wave of Tarkins. Blue just waiting with the next wave of Jags because they know that there will be a big attack. Gray waiting. They're all waiting. Because once these guys are killed, it's all going to go down. And Nighthawk does not seem to know. Actually, point of view actually worked. Maybe it didn't, actually. Yeah, I don't know if this is Nighthawk's point of view or not. I think that was just treason, though, if it was. Nighthawk has an idea the king is there. There goes Spaz, out on adventure. Per the name. King is on the move. Paladins and Axemen are going to find it, and that's going to be Grace kill. Well played, you purple. Uh, unfortunately for you, didn't really have as many players to fight with, and you know, Red. Red was a, a good teammate in terms of you know respect and honor, but Red wasn't really able to support you through your journey today. And Paul Hockey says, "Really, was treason was available? Oh, treason isn't available. Oh." Well, that could be because this is a scenario, maybe. But I mean, guys, where do you think the king is? Do you think the king's in these castles? Or do you think the king is in the open area where there's nothing? Like, maybe it's just too obvious for us. Norval says, so what now? Yeah, the what now situation is what's making this... Ma made some players be really cautious. No one wants to be the next one to die here. Paul does something every time I see him play... And it's really smart. And he basically, he just says kind of this is how it is. This is what I'm doing. This is what should happen. He just, he has a plan. And people love to follow a plan. Because a lot of people come into these games and they don't know what the crap they're doing. They just don't want to die first. So if they're going to stick with the guy who talks to them and has some type of idea of where to go, they're going to do it. Usually. There's red. And... I think Green Wolf spotted this because they've been talking about where Red could be. And Castle's starting to go down. Uh, Kane, community games go to YouTube if the community games are really good. And whether or not they're good really depends on the game, right? This one has been good so far. Once Red is dead, the next step will, will begin. Red's having fun. <laughs> He's like, nah, 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 nah. But not going to lie, I'm sure maybe some people in video form have felt this as well. But this whole waiting to kill Red thing, 
has slowed the game down significantly from where it will go next. So I'm ready, no offense, Red, to see you die. It's been a great time. You, you, you fought well. I feel bad for you, actually, that there wasn't as much support. But you've got to make a run for it. And please don't be good at that. Because they have not been able to find you thus far. There we go. The Paladins are there. And that's going to be the end for Red. Paul Hockey's going to get his kill. So we have four players remaining. The four players that have been on the team for a long time. Who is going to be the person that's killed next? I think maybe Nighthawk. Because Paul already put this planted the seed in everyone's minds earlier that Nighthawk can counter everyone. Yeah, you see this? This, I, how do you describe this? Gray, we're going for green next. Let's get gray quickly before he's ready. Wait. He says, let's get gray. Wait, what? Okay, so he, oh, he lies to gray. So lies to Gray first to give Gray an idea that, hey, we're still on the same team. And then tells the others we all go on Gray. So they're all going on Gray. That, that, that is Paul's greatest trait. He just has a sense of, um, of confidence. And he's like, all right, gang, this is what we're doing. Now, I don't think Gray was prepared to be attacked by all three. And Gray has not had very good, uh, Assertiveness? Yeah, yeah, assertiveness could be the word. But Gray has not been very good at chatting this game, which is a big concern. And Paul says, oh, he's attacking me, which is true. Gray had some units through here. Remember, trade is so important. The best way you kill a player now is get some towers in the trade and turn on them. And that is the only trade route. That is where the final three players will be trading. Gray is no big part in that. Hmm. Cannons go down. I wish I could see unit cube, but Royds has lots of cab in cube. It's just like cab, though. He doesn't have paladins, so he probably doesn't have the gold. The castle fire is getting quite a few kills, though. He does have Axemen in these castles he could use. And what's Blue doing? Blue's not doing Jack! Blue's not doing Jack! Blue's waiting for the next wave! Being real smart about it. He's like, alright guys, let's do it. Alright, we're going on Grey. And then he just waits. Now normally, I would be okay with this. But I thought I felt pretty good about my 73 elephant guess. And Blue... It's taking it down to 45 now. I do appreciate the fact, though, that Blue is healing the villagers and consistently taking the elephants. It's pretty smart. Blue actually says, Guys, I did nothing in the last 20 minutes. So he apologizes, which is fair, but he apologizes to the mirror. Hmm. And Paul says there's lots of buildings garrisoned, which is true. The Gray also sniped the siege, and Gray's still in this. Gray's got an awesome army count. 131 army for Gray. Holy crap. And all those castles and all these different positions really paying off. Hmm. T9000? I need to know. Any more games tonight, or should I sleep? I... You should... You should sleep if you need sleep. Dude? I don't know. I actually do not know. I would assume if it continues to take long players this long... To kill players. Now, this might be a long one, but I don't know how I'm feeling afterwards. It looks so funny. Norval declared war on roids. <laughs> it just looks funny because the text of declared war on is very similar to the gray. The blue says, gray, what did I do to you? And gray's like, well, everyone's attacking me. So we've got to make it interesting here. Like, what did you do for gray? Right? It's a better question, Norval. There's been no support of Grey, really. Everyone's against him. I'm pretty sure he just assumed Blue's going to be against me as well. I might as well get out in front of this. Again, no explosions on the Kings, which is the unfortunate part of it. King is garrisoned in there, and Teal and Grey and Green and everyone just going to town. Green loves the Bombard Cannons. Has made quite a few more of them. And is slowly taking down the buildings. And yeah, Gray's going to die. So, I'm waiting to see what Blue does. I think Blue and Teal are in standoff mode. 
because blue is making it very obvious I'm going to come kill you. And I think Teal will notice that because I think Teal is a pretty smart player. Green, we go for Teal, says Norval. Almost as if we just talked about it. And blue says, sounds great, actually. Now, I'm surprised it's come this far. But I think this is the point in the game where Paul's reputation of being very assertive and wanting to kill people all the time makes them think, well, what if Paul says I'm next? We don't want this guy to suggest me. Blue says I go for him right as the paladins leave because Steel's trying to help against Gray. And Nighthawk says we can take Gray on our own anyways. So let's just take Teal. And Norval with a smart move. He's doing this, I think, a similar thing to what Paul did earlier. He says, Teal, we go for green? And Paul says, yeah, I think we have to. So that gains Paul's trust. Oh, baby, I love that. That is such a smart move. And that kind of, that now makes Teal feel okay if you're sending units this way, right? If you're headed this way, he's like, oh, that's normal. And so let's see. So Blue says you're doing good to Gray now, which is kind of interesting, but you know, Gray's going to die soon. There's no need help, question mark. Again, questionable to even care about Gray at this point, honestly, Norval. And Gray's going to call it. Blue, you better make your move. You better make your move before Gray actually dies. This is funny. Teal is now asking Green for resources and saying Blue is getting scary. Blue and Teal do not trust each other. They're both so tricky. They have so much trickery and they don't trust each other. Nighthawk says only food right now. That's a bunch of baloney, bro. And it's a bunch of baloney from Paul as well. They're all lying through their teeth. They're all so good. He says, I need to trade again, sec. He's got, meanwhile, he's got 12K gold. And Paul, who needed resources, has 30K food and 19K gold. This is elite Diplo, guys. This game turned into elite diplomacy. Gray's still alive, by the way. And it's important he survives because the longer he survives, the better it is for Blue's potential attempt on Paul, which is starting as we speak. Uh, he, the king is on the move from gray. Paul is focused on that. He says, king, 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 king. But blue has now made a move against Paul. Who did get elite Tarkins, by the way. And, you know, green wants to know where. The king is now dead because it ran into a castle. And now the castles are starting to fall for teal. Okay, so king's on the way. And... Or King's on the way away from here. Obviously, Teal knows about this now. We will have elite Jags and Pikes against Tarkins that, and Paladins, and Jags and Pikes should do okay. Blue, though, has taken out the majority of Teal's fortifications, which is a big issue here. Really enjoying this game. Hope other people are as well. I have no way of knowing if that's going to be the case. Trev's going down. That's fine, though. And then Paul says... Blue attacked me. And Norval says, Green, you don't fight. And wait a second. Wait a second. Teal's gonna die. Okay. So. Down goes the king. Blue is probably freaking out there for a moment. But Blue ended up, you know, doing the majority of the work for that. And Paul is now dead. Lying to each other, this is turning to elite diplomacy. Wait, that's kind of correct. Well, it's the way they did it. It's it's not the lying. It's like, I'm going to work with you type of a, a thing. And I thought it was really good. It's not the best diplomacy I've ever seen. But the fact that everyone was doing a really good job of tricking each other was awesome. Sorry, Teal. You were a great friend, says Nighthawk. And Paul calls the GG. And now we're going to have a 1v1 battle. So the first thing I look at is the stockpile. And this could go on for a bit. We have plenty of res as we've established. They also have lots of wood. I, I believe they have to have purchased wood. Let me turn on market events and just page up for a second. Um, I'll wait for it. Okay, but I guarantee you the wood price has got to be expensive. Because they haven't been chopping much of it. It is interesting to me, and it just now dawned on me. 
Uh, Nighthawk is in the bird nothing game and could win the bird nothing game. I don't think Norval is a type of bird. Correct me if I'm wrong. By the way, all the trade's starting to go down now because of castles and towers along the shoreline. You do actually have blue trading... I don't know where that's headed, but it's all going to die. Okay, page up. I guess I'll just leave market events on if they want to buy more wood, but I guess at this point... Is there not a way I can look at it now? Shoot, they're not going to buy wood for a while. Norval says, is Jag good against Paladin? I don't think Jag wins against Paladin, but Jag should be pretty good against Cavalier. It is 12 plus 7 attack, but like Jag should beat the champions, and I don't know how well they trade specifically against the Cav, but it should be good. I think the thing that Malians have that could be problematic would be Gabetto, which is out of the castle, or hand cannons. But, you know, like, stat-wise, the Cavalier probably in a good, pretty good spot to kill the Jags. Cost-effectively, I don't know. The more I look at the stats, Jags' stats are actually pitiful. 75 HP, and then it's 140 HP for the Cavalier, and they get plus 7 attack. So, like, who cares about your 12 plus 8 attack when you've got, you know, plus 7 with more HP? So, pretty strong. And the production's looking good here, too. Maybe if I click on a market. Mm. Oh, it is in the market. Sick. Okay, so it's 497 gold to buy 100 wood. That means they bought a lot of wood. That's quite a few purchases there. That's pretty sick. I actually never thought to check that. That's good to know for the future. Now, you, you might want to contribute with pikemen if you're Aztecs. For the calf, which is great, but then if you meet the champions, you lose that fight. So it's kind of tricky. There's a bit of a rock, paper, scissors. And, you know, with all the castles for blue, I think that's the one main thing that is my positive for blue. Is It's just the fortifications. Green doesn't have quite as much of that. But, I, I give the advantage to Nighthawk nonetheless because of the potential for gunpowder. And we'll see how quickly they run out of resources here. Because this is a, a finish. A finish and a half with, like, no resources left on the map. I am wondering, though, if Blue is going to be able to find a market to trade with. Like, there. Blue knew about that. I think Yellow's enemy to him. But I guess, in theory, you could take out the castles and still trade there. That's a pretty big deal. Hmm. Castle will go up eventually. Oh, that's a Frank castle. Never mind. Uh, so that was from Royds. It feels like the fights have been back and forth here. The pikemen get that plus eight attack as well, which is great against the calf. And stockpiles are important. Norval has more on food and way more gold in the bank. Holy cow! But how much does Nighthawk have in Q? Nighthawk going Cav Archers, which actually I don't hate. If you get Heavy Cav Archer, it's actually probably worth it. Like, yes, you do lack Bracer, so a lot of people don't think Mali and Cav Archers are great. But it's better than Arbalest, probably, because Heavy Cav Archer gives you the extra attack. Not to mention, you still have lots of HP. Why no Gabettos? I think Gabettos with one castle is... A bit tricky. But I could see still mixing in Gabettos with everything else. Nighthawk says, good job getting rid of my trade. Do you have some? And yeah, we know the answer is no right now for blue. Yeah, I think this comp is really tough to stop. Aztecs would maybe we'd need to go for eagles or skirms. And the thing about jags, as good as they are, they lack pierce armor. <clears throat> so they're going to go down relatively quickly to the cab archers, as you can see. They did receive plus one pierce armor. Uh, so they, they have a max of six pierce armor now, where in the past, I think it was five. I, on that note, think that the Japanese samurai should also receive six pierce armor. And it's wild to me that they haven't done that yet. Um, but... 
Anyways, I'm just a big samurai fan, and I also feel like there should be some consistency, and the Jag is, is even more situational. Or, you know, the samurai and the Jag similarly situational, I guess. Blue may be struggling, says, should we say we won? Sure, we can just do allied victory if you want, says Green. Mm. I mean, they're, they're really considering this. Normally like to see a fight to the finish, you know? Actually, the fact that that castle went down means that Nighthawk can trade. Ooh, that's huge. That is huge. Skirms from Aztecs, pretty good. Skirm is finding some good kills. I thought they were going to chat about it. And Blue with the... Hey, maybe we should do Allied Victory delay technique. Now is up to 110 military. Hmm. Cav Archer's going down. Cav Archer's getting pushed back. There's no meat shield anymore. Nighthawk says, do you not want to? I would be a little annoyed if I were Nighthawk. But also... It... You could see the guys made army. <laughs> so... Yeah, maybe, you know, just realize a little faster would be my advice, but kind of tricky. I mean, I feel like Blue, you don't say that and then not respond in an ideal world, but I feel like Blue's always had the better position just because of the fortifications. The only thing would be if trade is there for one player, not the other, then eventually green can hold. But even just the number of production buildings, Blue's got... 38 barracks. Blue's got 12 ranges. We're looking at 10 barracks, 10 stables. One castle versus 8 or 11. And then elephant count is 28, by the way. We'll check the final elephant count at the end of the game. But uh, I really was feeling confident with my 73 guess. I got it wrong. And I'm, I'm disappointed. Pikeman in the trade route. Poking down the trade. Do they get bonus against trade carts because there's Cav driving it? I'm going to assume no. It looks like they kill the trade cogs just as fast. Though I don't know. Is there an HP difference? Uh, Well, trade cog has 80 more HP. I, then I don't even know. Is there like an armor difference? Can I not see more details? This is important stuff. What's definitely not important is the massive tread push that Blue is going forward with. And I think Nighthawk calls it here, guys. The trade's not going to kick in. Nighthawk is out of gold. And Nighthawk will... It doesn't have the castles. Right? So, trade... Actually, Nighthawk invested what little gold was remaining to get the trade out. So, you know, hoping for some payoff, obviously. And Nighthawk realizes, I'm not going to win. As a hawk on bird nothing. Says, hmm, I guess you got me. It's going to call the GG here. GG's called. Nighthawk will tap out. And wait a second. Norval's still in the game. And it's not ending. <laughs> we have one player. That's it. And <laughs> Paul says the game won't let Blue win because he betrayed me. <laughs> I don't think Norval knows that... Hold on a second. Something hit my window? What? Okay, I have to open the front door, apparently. <laughs> I Something hit my window. And I was like, what is this? And I'm looking at my phone right now. Apparently, I've been getting texts because our front door knob is broken. And my fiance is trying to come in, but the game has ended. Woohoo! Uh, it's an amazing finish. Look at the stats real quick. Yay. Exciting times. Norval's never going to get to leave the game. And uh, that was very confusing. I thought maybe a neighbor kid was hitting my window with a tennis ball or something. There you go. It's Norval trying to leave the game. We're not going to allow him to do it. Sorry for the weird ending. I apologize. 